Hello and welcome there to another episode of the Cliff Notes podcast, where we ask a leader and find their way. Today I've been joined by uh, Ian Woodley, uh, founder and director at Stilo Touch, where they help businesses showcase their expertise to their customers. Uh, how are you doing today, Ian? Yeah, I'm well, thank you very much. Cool, cool. No, it's grand talking to you. Um, we, we've caught up in a number of occasions in, in different different vices and guises, uh, uh, events and business and things. Um, but uh, how, how are you finding uh, the world nowadays? You, you got got stuff opening up and uh, the business is is going well. People are back out selling. I've certainly seen um, a lot more activity and discussion. Now that the whole expo and event scene has opened up again, people are now, you know, where we are in the calendar now, people are planning towards activity for next year. And so I'm definitely seeing, uh, you know, despite what we hear on the news and in the climate at the moment, I'm definitely seeing a lot more optimism within the advanced advanced manufacturing and technology sectors and people are really looking forward to driving their businesses forward. And I think the the way that the the event scene has opened up again um, has really helped that, and it just means that everybody's getting back face to face and having those really meaningful discussions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. Um, and the 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 event space is 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 your sort of main focus, the the sort of uh, presenting and selling. I mean, can you can you sort of fill us in? Or where's where's your picture or where's your background that's brought you to this space? So I do find that um, it's really useful uh, and important for me to get that face to face time with our customers um, so that we can really have those meaningful discussions. And, it, and, it's, and it's much better to do that in a, in, a, in a face-to-face environment rather than on a call, for example. And so, you know, being present and being visible at, at the events um, is a great way for me to start those conversations and also to continue those relationships um, so yes, that's a that's a really good way for us to um, you know engage with our customers um, and and find out what's happening in their world as well. And and I mean, how how you find? It? I mean, this is a, a business that um, how, how long have been you been going for for a few years working in this space? Oh well, yeah, absolutely. So I mean, as as a studio, we've been going for about sixteen years. Um, and really within the advanced manufacturing technology type sector, we've certainly been working, um, through that for, you know, a good sort of five, six years or so. Mm -hmm. And, and then, I mean, just to, to touch on it, we're going to, we're going to look more broadly at uh, at what the industry is and, and, and how, how you you help impact it. But, um, I mean, what's the, the, the product, I mean, what is, uh, Steel of Touch, uh, and what's it doing for business? So we really specialize in helping advanced manufacturers, technology businesses, technical businesses, really helping them to showcase their expertise in a much more dynamic and uh, impactful way with their customers. Um, And so those sectors are really of interest to me in terms of how do these companies actually present themselves in the best possible light when they get into a pitch scenario, a presentation environment, when they're talking to their stakeholders. Inevitably, what we find is that these companies have got fantastic technology. They've got great processes. They're doing some really interesting work. And yet, actually, when they get in front of their customers, the way they present the business just falls a little bit flat, and it's really not doing them justice. And so we, we're really passionate about helping these kind of businesses to present themselves in the best way forward. This could be um, an advanced manufacturer. It could be a, a technical product type business. Um, there's a huge range of different applications here. But, you know, whether, whether we're talking to a, uh, a 3 million um, turnover SME or a 3 billion turnover uh, defense prime for example they all have the same challenges and that is they don't really have the impactful materials to hand to talk about what they do you know they might they might have a whole range of different slide decks or different videos or different assets and when they get in front of a uh, a customer or a prospect um, it's all a little bit clunky and it's not very professional 
and inevitably the the resources that the resources that they have really don't do them justice and so we were on a bit of a mission to really help these businesses uh, raise their game, deliver the wow factor, and actually communicate in a much more efficient, impactful, and memorable way. Sponsorship of this podcast has been brought to you by Holding Bay, the digital web agency. Holding Bay specializes in working with B2B companies like manufacturers to build better solutions and drive better sales funnels. So if you would like to build a web application or improve your branding and sales funnel, get in contact today, holdingbay.co.uk or call us on 01273 044019. So... You know, um, as, as an example, you know, typically these companies will pull out some some slide decks to talk about what they do. The challenge with these is um, obviously they're very easy to, to put together. But, um, you know, the, there's a host of problems that they run into with these. First of all, they don't allow you to uh, change the flow of conversation, depending on what the, um, the audience uh, wants to hear about. So inevitably, you uh, you might get a question and then you uh say okay well you know that's on slide 23 we're going to come to that or you can't easily navigate your way around it's hard to build in a lot of the video content that these companies might naturally have um and very often they're dealing with with technical processes that are best illustrated through maybe some animation or some motion graphics or something like that and you know, they're not really able to to tell a very impactful story and to bring all these different media types together to really deliver that understanding. And so what we do is we developed this interactive digital sales and marketing platform, which is offline. And it means what they can do is have on their, their laptop, their Surface Pro, their iPad, whatever the team are using, they can have everything they need to have a really uh, engaging narrative with their customers. They can change the flow of conversation. They can bring up a whole rich mix of media. So say, for example, the client says, okay, can you give me uh, an example of how your process works? Within a couple of taps, they could instantly bring up an animation or a motion graphics video to explain how that happens. And then they might say, uh, can you show me a use case of this? And they can instantly go to a use case with some animated metrics, maybe a customer video testimonial. They might want to know some, um, some return on investment statistics. And they can bring up all this rich mix of media whenever and wherever they need to. So they're, they're, they're tailoring the conversation specifically to that audience and able to draw on whatever they need. So it's really relevant to the um, to the customer every single time. So it's a much more um, focused experience, really, rather than that very kind of linear slide deck. And it, and it, and it really makes a difference to how the team are talking about the business. Okay. Okay. Um, so what what are we talking here? Th- these are these are still in person. Uh, conversations in, in person presentations or, or these are online or, or how, how are you describing the use of it just to paint paint that sort of visual picture of the the conversation someone's using around this when we're talking just in audio <laughs> yeah definitely well that's a good question and and the beauty with this system is it's really flexible so not only is it really flexible from a from a usage point of view whereas the team can go wherever they want to and pull up whatever they want but it's also really useful from um, how they use it with their customers as well. So yes, in person on a tablet, Surface Pro or an iPad, but equally they can do a screen share uh, online. If they're on a Teams call, for example, they can instantly bring up the same content there. Uh, we also are able to put it online as well. So we've got a couple of customers where they might go and do a presentation for a client and then they can just send them a URL link to view that afterwards if they wanted to. 
And then finally, particularly going back to that um, expo event space, you can easily just hook it up to a big touch table. So if you wanted to have like a virtual sales assistant almost on your stand, you can have a touch table there, plug it in, and you've got all that content easily available for passers-by if they come to the stand just to navigate their way around and pull up information. If you've got a couple of sales guys on the stand who are busy talking to other people, there's something else there to to occupy you know, new visitors to the stand as well. Mm-hmm. So as I'm sort of understanding it's it's sort of filling that gap of of both facilitating all the sort of in person sort of interactive thinking and changing your thoughts uh, on the day like I'm not going slide one two three four ten uh, I'm 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 jumping around to content that makes sense and and focus what what that um, that prospect in front of me wants to talk about so oh they wanted to pull up the more information or they wanted to 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 talk about a different section I don't have to have skipped through uh, 10 slides of, of some other subject that they found not to be um, in, in in their alignment um, we can go straight to that and then we can come back around uh, and be a bit more like a, an aid rather than just a, a standing on stage for for half an hour and, and then you're done yeah, absolutely. Instead of spending hours and hours, you know, creating new presentations for for each new meeting that you're going into, you can have one you can have one tool that's got everything in it and you simply just navigate to the parts you want for that particular presentation. So it, it's saving teams hours of time. Uh, and it also means that you're you're really, you know, relevant to that particular customer every time. And also you you're able to, you know, not only navigate in a flexible way, but but more importantly for me personally, be able to bring up a whole range of explanatory content as well. So, you know, whether it is whether you want to bring up those um company or product videos or whether you want to illustrate a particular process or technology through you know, an animated infographic or some motion graphics or something like that. It, it's the ability to bring up all this rich content uh, instantly. And it, it just delivers a much more, you know, immersive experience, really. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the, this is an immersive experience. Um, yeah, it's going to align to to sort of seeing it or, or being at events and, and seeing that piece. Could we maybe um, sort of widen out or, or roll back to what, what what encouraged you to create this platform? I mean, was there was there a need, or could you could you give us an idea of what is that that pain point or that that friction that that a business is going to be seeing? Um, if you've got sort of an example or an understanding there, yeah, definitely. So our origins are in um, the traditional graphic space in terms of branding and literature and display material, and then we encompassed video, animation, and motion. And these interactive presentations just seem to be a natural link between those two uh, parts of the business, really, where we could develop a a tool that um, really uh, made a demonstrable difference to how people communicated that narrative out to customers. Um, So as an example of that, we've recently uh, completed a project for a an advanced technology manufacturer who produces um, really class-leading um, cooling systems for data centers globally. And as a technical manufacturer with a, with a high uh, you know, technology bias to their product, they really wanted a new way to talk about their um, their expertise and their class leading products. And traditionally, what they had was um, well, they had lots of different PowerPoint decks depending on who they were talking to. They were constantly shuffling things around. The design of these decks wasn't brilliant, um, you know, because the guys who were putting this together they weren't designers, um, so they didn't look the best. But equally, they were all a bit flat as well. And they didn't really have a good mechanism to talk about, okay, so how does this product work? Why is it better? How do we present the benefits out to the the customer in a really interesting way? Um, And so we we totally re-engineered the way they were having their conversation by delivering this product into them and created a range of um, little motion graphics videos to talk about how their technology works. So, for example, the airflow around their product, 
um, the environmental benefits um, and and brought all of that in so that they could instantly dictate where the presentation was going to go. And it was really important for them to create a, a very impactful first impression. So these guys are talking to some some pretty chunky companies around the world about how their technology can benefit them. And so they really needed to make a good impression. And because they're traveling a lot, they're going to a lot of shows globally. Um, so just over the last two weeks, they've had two shows in two different continents, for example. Um, having this content easily available offline on his iPad, for example, means that whenever he gets into a situation with, with a potential uh, customer, uh, maybe they're having a coffee somewhere, uh, he can instantly just pull out his tablet, dive into all of this, pull up lots of um, you know really engaging content, not having to worry about the Wi-Fi. And, and he's really delivering a much more impactful experience and really establishing the quality of his business as well. This was what a pain for for a few customers. You just saw it as an industry thing, so you you built up the product, or it, it started with one or two, uh, and and then you've extrapolated it out. and 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 how long's this the the product been in existence? I mean, how how much have you iterated and improved it? Um, yeah, anything. So we've we've developed it. It's gone through various stages of de- developments over the past two or three years, something like that. Um, but in terms of in terms of pain points, I'm I'm seeing the same pain points across lots of different types of uh, manufacturing and industrial businesses, uh, regardless of their size. As I said, you know whether you're a, a three million or a three billion um, you know a turnover company, I'm seeing the same challenges um, where they want more flexibility in terms of how they put presentations together. And they don't really have an easy way of incorporating uh, maybe video content or animations. And also, they need often a little bit of help in creating some uh, motion graphics assets to talk about something. So, for example, we were in conversation with a um, with an actuator company who had a big presentation coming up to an aerospace prime. and they really wanted to explore the inner workings of one of their products. They wanted to have a, like an exploding CAD render where you could dive into particular areas, tap on an area, bring up some content on all of that, collapse that back down and and reassemble the the product you see. And they didn't really have a way of doing that in a, um, in an easy to use way. Well, we can build that for them and build it into our interactive presentation, you see, so that when they're sitting down with this, uh, with this prospect, they can instantly just, you know, bring up this kind of content. And what does that say to them about, about the quality of their business as well? So I'm seeing, you know, lots of different companies have the same kind of challenges where they're having to create multiple different uh, presentations and then the presentations they do create aren't that impactful anyway. And so, uh, you know, it's definitely making a difference to how they can clearly communicate the benefit out to their customers and how they're positioning their company. Mm-hmm. And then in terms of presentation, I mean, uh, many companies have presentations or don't feel like they're the best or don't like making them or some really like them. I mean, is, are you suggesting this is a this is a partnership that you work and help people make better presentations or, or you're suggesting that they can make their own presentations better um, and more versatile by using uh, the, the product that we've been talking about? So the part of the process that really excites me is the initial kind of discovery phase, you know, And, um, you know, I've had several meetings just over the last couple of weeks where we've sat down and we've talked about the potential of how they could um, discuss and present and talk through their business, their products, their technology. And that, that initial discussion phase is really exciting for me because it gives me the opportunity to... Um, explain different ways and to put some suggestions forward about how they could, um, you know, really talk about the work that they do. And and very often 
my role is in guiding them through, uh, you know, different ways of talking through what they do and giving them suggestions and ideas. It's like, okay, well, you, you could, um, you could have some kind of uh, animation to talk about this process, or, you know, you mentioned you had this particular technology here. How do you talk about that? Uh, would it be really useful to have a bit of a step-by-step tap through or, or, you know, how about if you had a little kind of how it works video or you've got a very complex process here, just having a static graphic of that isn't really explaining that to me. What about if that was had some motion to it to explain the different processes, for example? And as soon as we start talking through those kind of scenarios, you can see them thinking, actually, yeah, that'd be really useful for us to have, you know, um, or, you know, we thought about that for a long time and never got around to doing it. So, for me to almost pull apart their 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 story and say, well, you know, you could do this, you could do that. Would this be valuable for you? That really gets them thinking. So I really enjoy that that initial part of the process. Um, and so just to, to get an understanding of that and then pull that back into sort of ROI and, and sort of rolling out to to get buy in from uh, from teams using this um, uh, is where where is the pricing and you don't necessarily have to give me numbers but i mean is this a is this an upfront cost is it an ongoing cost um just to understand how uh, how can i start to to attribute back an roi on this and 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 learn why this might be better than another solution absolutely so obviously we're dealing with a, a broad range of businesses um and so we have three levels of our um, Stilo Touch platform. We have a light, a plus, and a pro. So we have an entry level, a mid range, and then a really sort of high end bespoke uh, level. And these different levels are kind of determined by the level of interaction that goes into it, the amount of uh, animation or motion graphics we might want to create. It really depends where the individual businesses wanted to go. Um, so at an entry level, for example, uh, we might be talking to a, uh, a manufacturer who really wants to go through his product line, bring up a company video, uh, maybe talk about some of the industries that they work in, in a very uh, interactive way. Uh, whereas at the other end, at the higher end of the scale, we might be talking about a, um, a, a very large manufacturer who has a, an incredible uh, facility and wants to have like a VIP visitor experience where they can navigate their way around the um, the manufacturing area, bringing up uh, content, animation, motion, all of that side of things. So, so really, it's very scalable. Um, and the way we do this is our typical development time might be um, a couple of months to put one of these things together. So in terms of investment, we normally sort of um, um, stage the delivery of this um, over a couple of months from a budget perspective. So that really helps our clients, uh, you know, budget for that. Um, And then we're able to support them ongoing with regards to updates or putting new content in. So it's very scalable uh, as their business grows, as new products come online, as technology changes we can adapt all of that so that the team have always got the latest version with them. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're very much, you know, partnering with these businesses to construct something around their needs and to make sure that it's really uh, affordable and hardworking for them. And as an example there on, on ROI, um, one of the projects we've delivered in um, is – has the potential to see a massive return on investment here. I mean, so we're talking, for example, a project cost, which might have been around about uh, 15 or 18,000. But actually, he's looking at securing contracts, you know, well into, uh, you know, multi-million pound contracts here. Um, And so it was really important for him to have have a real show-stopping uh, presentation that was really going to explain his technology. So the potential for um, ROI on some of these contracts is huge. No pun intended, but you touched on uh, uh, keeping things up to date. Um, is that a 
a part of it. I mean, how, I know that's been a problem with, with working in teams I've had before was uh, which version is the current version and is it is it version presentation 1.3 point copy master final uh, or revision three? Um, I mean, how, how are you keeping people up to date? And, and especially if they're not all in the same building, they're, they're around the world or they're at a trade show or something that they're presenting them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and of course, you know, some of our clients do have global teams. They might have various different sales territories around the world. How do they manage all of that? And that's, 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 a, that's a challenge that we hear a lot of really in terms of, you know, everybody's got different types of um, decks, but also you might have a team in a, in a different territory. They're adjusting that deck. They're changing it. It starts to go off brand. And then you've got your, your, you've got your brand team back at headquarters not knowing what's going on or not really in control of, of the message that's going out there. And that's another benefit here is that everything is structured in such a way that whoever's using it is going to be on brand, going to be on message. And so from a central uh, brand perspective, that's really important. And so what we do is depending on individual uh, protocols for different businesses, we have lots of different solutions for how this can be deployed out to the team. We have a central uh, resource, for example, where they can grab the latest file from at any point in time. So if we do need to do some updates, bring in some new products, adjust some technical specifications, for example, maybe there's a new video that's being produced. We can um, you know, instantly upload it to that. And, and, and the guys can make sure they've always got the latest version and nobody's doctoring it and changing something and, um, you know, maybe maybe going off message. Um, so, you know, that, that's, a, that's a really valuable insight for them. No, that's great. And, and those are the sort of things that are what you can have, uh, like someone in charge of that, like uh, the, the project manager or, or someone internally can can know where this stuff is and, and how to sort of push it up and update it and keep control. That's something that, that's that's within their power. Yeah, we have, we have full deployment instructions. And also what we do is very often when we deliver a project in, we'll get the team together on, on a call or in person and we'll walk them through um, what they've got at their disposal. We might even uh, issue a, a walkthrough PDF guide just where we show them the different sections and what they've got available to them. So uh, and if we're doing our job correct, then then really it should be very easy for them to navigate around all of this and very easy for them to to discover what they've got at their fingertips. So, yeah, absolutely. The, the whole process works very, very well. It's very seamless. It's very easy. I You know, I often see my job as really just making it very easy for the client to do theirs, you know. So, you know, as we guide people through the development of this process, uh you you know we're very much helping helping the client and um you know guiding them through what needs to be done and very often once we get past the initial uh briefing stage everything comes internally to us and we look after everything pretty much until the first iteration comes out for for comment really um so yeah we we very much take a an active role in the project management and making sure after deployment that the team have got everything they need Mm-hmm. No, that sounds great. I mean, I imagine that's a uh, top of mind to, to many people at the moment who must be brushing up their, their sales and marketing material when we're in uh, another season of, of trade shows and events. Um, that if you've got your, your best foot forward, then uh, you're going to be more confident in what you're doing. Absolutely. And of course, you know, if maybe sort of people are um, budget setting for the next financial year. They may be thinking, okay, so what are we going to do next year? And, and what I'm finding at the moment is that, um, you know, these businesses are just really receptive to, to new ways of doing things. And, and very often just having that initial call, um, sitting down on a team's call or grabbing a coffee or something like that, really gets them thinking about different ways. It's like, yeah, we, you, it'd be really useful if we could do this or that, or these are the problems we're having. How can we solve that? And so, you know, I, I really enjoy that that initial conversation in terms of being able to give them some suggestions of different ways and how they can, uh, you know, you know, better, better talk about the work that they're doing really. Okay. Okay. And I mean, it's been great talking to you today. I mean, is there, is there sort of one, one takeaway you could give people if they want to, uh, if they're doing that planning, uh, a, a good thought that you'd 
upset people as to where's the research or where's the first steps you do that or, or just in taking it the other way what's a, what's a good tip to think about um when you're creating a presentation or giving a presentation um that that you've been working on i think one of the key areas um is obviously when you know we always uh think from our own perspective when we're putting this kind of material together and I would always say, think about it from your customer's perspective and how they're going to see your business, you know. So when you're putting some material together, I would always be thinking about it from the customer's perspective. Is it is it communicating everything clearly to them? Is it explaining everything? Are they going to understand it? And is it going to be impactful enough for them, you know? Um if you've got a particular technical product or a technology, are you explaining that well enough? Um, the features, the benefits, are they going to understand that? Or is there a better way that you could do that? Would it be really useful if you had a particular um, uh, asset, a video or an animation or a particular um, sequence of events or a motion graphic, for example, that would really explain that product better? And, and how much more valuable would that be for you to have that? So I'd take a, a very objective view in terms of how you are putting this material together and see it for the, from the other side of the desk, see it from the customer's viewpoint. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're presenting something around a, I don't know, a milling machine, a lathe or an engine or a part, that, that's quite a three-dimensional thing. It's quite a, and it fits into another process. It doesn't exist solely in isolation. So if you can see it moving or interacting with other pieces, it just makes it, makes it way more uh, connectable and relatable. Uh, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, absolutely. So as an example of that, we were working with a Canadian um, pharmaceutical manufacturer who was really looking at the milling of um, uh, powdered um, foodstuffs and ingredients. And they wanted to really show the, the parameters of customization on their process, the fact that you could change the roller size or you could change the speed or the gap or something like that. And so the idea that you could you could have a model of their particular piece of equipment and tap on different areas and see the adjustments and 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 what that made to the manufacturing process that was really powerful for them, and you could instantly then just bring up some 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 uh, some three D renders of these parts changing or moving and and then show the particular um, you know metrics changing with that. Um, you know, something that you would never normally be able to do in, in, in traditional sort of, you know, slide decks and so on. And I know it's not always the same point and uh, not specifically for your tool, but um, uh, when you get an industry that, that is used to having uh, having CAD files or, or, or different 3D files of, of, of a product, you, you're sometimes onto a better start of being able to visualize that and, and having a start to work with compared to, to companies that, that just don't have any of those sort of base drawings or base designs of things um, to start getting that conversation going. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and we've, we've had this conversation numerous times just in the last couple of weeks, actually, where we're taking, we're taking step files and actually building a sequence out of that to really explain the technology. And that's been really useful for, for some businesses. And not only do we bring it into the, um, the Stilo Touch presentation platform, but we also then give them those sequences as video files as well so they can use it outside and you know use it for their social media or, or, or whatever really so yes that can be really valuable for them mm -hmm. so uh we've been been great having this conversation and we, we come to to the to the end of the end of the show so um we always like to end on a, on a couple of little more fun and, and sort of personal questions um so the first one if you if you've got a, a favorite uh book or tool that you've been working with that um uh people may be like to 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 learn or or, or check out A lot of the books, well, a lot of the books I've been reading recently have been sort of really to do with business development and um, you know thinking about the bigger picture and where you go. I think one, okay, so so one book that um, I did really enjoy and due to reread again actually would be the E Myth, E Myth Revisited, and that that is that's a great book for taking a holistic view as to where the business wants to go in terms of getting you to see that future picture 
in terms of what's the structure of the business? Where do you want to be in you know five years time, for example? And actually about getting you to to embrace that mindset now as to where you want to be in the future. And that that was really interesting, actually, and quite transformational in terms of how we structure our team and the various positions um, and different you know job roles with, within the team, really. So the E Myth Revisited. Although it's been around for a long time, it's it's one of those books that you well, do literally revisit from time to time and just sort of see how, how you're keeping on track. So that, that that's a good recommendation. No, I like that. I mean, you do find and, and sometimes rereading a book, you come to it in a different place or, yeah. or with different learnings out of it because you've got different problems or, or, or different business in front of you at the time uh, and it just connects you in a different way or it didn't connect you the first time and it does the next sort of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And of course, yeah. the other the other classic as well from a from a, from a business perspective would be the Go Giver series, um, uh, which which are fantastic. Really giving you the the concept of um, how you're adding value to your customers as well. So I really enjoy rereading those. I think there's about uh, two or three or four even maybe in the series, but um, they're always worth uh, you know revisiting every every few months as well. Yeah, I've been I've been doing a good bit of reading around sort of um, uh, value pricing and 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 starting with no and things of of what where 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 are you adding that multiple to to not not that it's a straight transaction sort of one to one here's my service here's the cost sort of thing is like what are we partnering on yeah where and so I like that where where are you adding that value um, to to give the give the customer that they're they're coming in with you and they're knowing what they're gonna uh, to multiply out so um yeah you know, that's good. yeah that's cool and and then the other question was was just if you could give someone a wish um give them or give them a superpower um to uh, to take on uh, sort of this sort of sales and marketing piece or presenting um where where would you uh, where would you go with that could be at an industry level, could be in a one person in a room, <laughs> new audience, whichever level you like. Well, I, I think the one superpower I would like to give them really is the ability to to make their business look amazing, you know, and to be really make sure that the way they talk about their business is as is as great and as powerful as the products and the technology that they're actually doing, you know. And very often, you know, you know what you see is they might be doing great work, but they just can't talk about it well enough. So I would I would love them to have the ability to to make their business look amazing. And I think it's it's almost a superpower we all need to work out, isn't it? It, it doesn't come for for many of us. It doesn't come naturally. We do the work or we talk about it, and trying to do both makes you yeah. a unicorn. You've 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 had to work at it. It's 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 homework. It's it's getting good at it, and it's listening to people and and being on the same page as them. Yeah, absolutely I like that. Cool. Well, thanks for joining us today, and it's, it's been great talking to you again. And uh, we we'll look forward to catching up again soon. Thanks very much. Really enjoyed it. Cool. Um, if people want to get in touch with you uh, or what sort of a, a good sort of customer for you if, if people are thinking about this space? So always happy to have a conversation with, uh, with, you, with your listeners. Um, we really enjoy working within advanced manufacturing, technical businesses, technology businesses, uh, aerospace, defense, increasingly the space sector as well at the moment. Um, so all of those kind of technical spaces, um, that's a real sweet spot for us. And it's an area where we can add a lot of value. Cool, and we'll we'll put the the links out in the uh, in the show notes afterwards. Is it best to contact you um, through the through the company website, or um, what's your preferred way? Picking up the phone, I'll give you an email. Um, yeah, either way, actually. So the website stilotouch dot com is a great resource and a great way to get in touch. But equally, uh, you know, really happy to to take a call or book a Teams call. So um, you could email me at um, ian woodley at stilotouch.com or you know by all means give me a call on my mobile which is 07814-776-747 brilliant brilliant well we'll catch up again soon and uh, thanks for joining us again fabulous thanks very much thanks for joining us again on another episode of the Cliff Notes podcast if you'd like to get in contact with myself or the guest details will be in the show notes at cliffnotespodcast.com 
or feel free to reach out on social media uh, and give us a chat there. It'd be great. And uh, we'll look forward to keeping businesses moving forward 